Hey everyone, welcome to Crest TV, your regular roundup of all things Crestron and what's going on in the UC and collaboration industry. And we have a, a tech influencer, social media legend and great from the industry uh, joining us uh, on this uh, week's show. Um, someone that I follow, and I think, you know, if you if you aren't following him, then uh, where have you been? You're obviously slightly sleeping in a darkened room. Uh, Evan Kerstel. Evan, how are you doing? I'm doing great, all th things considered. Thanks for having me on the show. Really honored to be here. Now, as uh, as we were talking about earlier, I my my Twitter and LinkedIn uh, status it's, it's it's a hobby for me. I've got obviously my day job here at Crestron, but um, I do the show and I try and kind of post it out. I've got something like just over a thousand followers on on Twitter, which I thought was quite good. Uh, and I've got sort of I don't know four or five thousand on LinkedIn. Uh, give us give us some numbers of uh, of where we can all aspire to with what you're doing. <laughs> Oh, well, you know, for me, it's a personal obsession. It's unhealthy. I wouldn't advise it for anyone trying to do what I do. So uh, no, uh, no worries there. Uh, but it's a fun place to learn, engage, create content. And it's it's all about the quality of the content and the conversation. So that's, uh, that's more important than anything else. Absolutely. I think there's so much sort of... Uh... So much fud around that it's uh, getting good quality and again i've always loved uh, some of the stuff that you're putting out there and again if i ever want to know anything about what's going on at like ces or the trade shows um you're definitely the one to follow and uh, to see what's going on so thank um, you give me give me my update and again certainly a, a social media aspiration uh, and leader to go and follow and mentor towards um we've got you on the show to talk about you know your your visions of what's going on in the kind of video uc and, and tech industries for for this year i love having you know people like yourselves on with your crystal ball because uh, a it gives me a great insight as to what what to follow and to look at this year uh do my homework on but then to come back at the end of the year maybe we'll get you back on in december and we'll see how many of them came true what are you what are you seeing as we're, we're sitting here at the beginning looking forward into 2023 what are you what are you seeing what are you excited about for the rest of the year well i'm excited about uh, about generative ai or ai in general uh creeping into the mainstream and into every app and device we're using. And that really raised was raised to uh, high visibility with something called chat GPT uh, from open AI. That's essentially very, very good at writing. So this new AI can uh, write essays, can write code, poems, songs, any kind of written text at a level that is shockingly good and and this technology will work its way into our industry in the form of customer service uh, customer experience chatbots uh, learning education and uh, it's not only uh, amazing technology it's collaborative it's coachable it can be directed towards certain objectives <clears throat> um, and it's for the masses not just the tech geeks like myself so you know, I see a big uh, opportunity, a big shakeout. There's like 2,000 conversational AI companies out there, but uh, none of them can do what this uh, technology uh, from OpenAI can do. So not a threat to Google yet, but potentially, <laughs> you know, with Google search even. So fascinating development over the last is, you know couple months is it a bit like a kind of whose line is it anyway you kind of give it a topic you give it a genre and it then goes and creates sort of something it, it's, <laughs> it's it's that and more wow. uh talking points uh you know long form content essays analysis insight it's a pretty spectacular technology Goodness. I can see that being really powerful in the kind of contact center chatbot space. And then obviously the uh, students at university who uh, just want to laser it up and go to the pub and uh, don't want to do that. Work. Was, that was me. So <laughs> I would have been super excited to have that back in the day, although I was an engineering student. So well, it writes code too. So Wow. I mean, how, how, uh, that know, just that... blows my mind. Again, you've, you've got to obviously give it the kind of like the outcome of like, this is what I, this is what I want. And then it works backwards from that, I guess. And then yeah, it, it, exactly. Exactly. And it's, uh, it's phenomenal. You can try it. You can sign up. It's free. It's in a demo kind of beta mode wow. before it goes and it'll be available as an API as well as, uh, you know, uh, uh, a service. I'd love to, again, can't wait to see the uh, output of that. Uh, again, that's one to look for, I guess, at the end of the year to see what um, what stories, what films, what applications have been uh, put together with this. Songs even, I guess, that uh, have been put together with this and, uh, and and how they work. So, yeah, very interesting. Okay, but number one, we'll look at that one. Uh, what about um, 
the world of UC and collaboration. I saw a, a post on your Twitter feed uh, reposting this kind of um, the kind of AI avatars in in video conferencing platforms. Zoom, I think, was one they announced at Zoomtopia, and uh, I saw you post out. And obviously, there's the kind of uh, metaverse from Meta and Facebook. So, wh- where where's that kind of world going? Of this kind of you talked about AI, but are kind of bleeding into VR and uh, and metaverse. Well, because video is now mainstream. We're seeing these unique use cases of videos like Avatar, like Metaverse, like, uh, you know, third party developers building, you know, fun and interesting ways to make your video experience more entertaining or interesting or dynamic beyond just virtual backgrounds and, you know, those kind of things. But I think the big picture for me is that video is now mainstream. Hmm. We see the big players in this space like Microsoft and Google have really, really gotten good at video at scale. And um, increasingly in you know our space, it's gonna be a commodity service and it's gonna be ubiquitous with, with hybrid work. So I think Google and Microsoft went from a kind of a, a frankly, a, you know, half-baked video solution before the pandemic to, <laughs> you know, to being, uh, you know, high quality, pretty uh, uh, fantastic service at scale, of course, Zoom included. So it's it's the best of times for, you know, video collaboration. Uh, just picking up on a, a point you made there, I mean, obviously, you know, we, we've pandemic, we've done the whole kind of hybrid working, working from home, you know, the return to the office stuff. What if someone was to say kind of modern work? You know, what do you, what do you see modern work being for for two thousand and twenty three? You know, are we are we just going to go back to the old days? Is there this kind of hybrid? What do you think is going to go on with regards to you know, modern work and the way people you know work in the future? Yeah, I think this year and the next few years are going to be the era of hybrid work. Uh, I don't think we're all going back to the office as much as. Uh, you know, the apples of the world are trying to push and highly, you know, highly distributed work uh, is is now the norm, despite all the uh, uh, discussions around, uh, you know, remote versus hybrid versus in office. And, you know, you're seeing that in the business as people create workspaces in the office and workspaces at home that cater to this new hybrid world. And whether you're on the one end of the spectrum or the other, you're still going to require, you know, the sort of work from anywhere culture, you know, the technology behind it and the products to, to enable it. So, you know, I, I think now we get into the subtleties of, you know, how do you, how do you build a more productive work culture? How do you manage and lead remote uh, uh, staff and deal with things like proximity bias and all of the, you know, team building broader complex issues like benefits and, and pay scales and confidentiality and taxation that go into this new hybrid world. So, man, it's, uh, just because the quote unquote pandemic is coming to an end here in the U S you know, not so much uh, around the world in China, for example, doesn't mean that, uh, you know, there aren't a, a ton of complexity to work through as, as business leaders. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, again, I I certainly wouldn't want to be a business leader at the moment trying to work out what the plan is. I mean, they, they've had a tough enough time over the last sort of two or three years, but then, you know, how do we how do we move forward with this idea and concept? how that's going to fit out and how, again, the work is going to kind of come together? Yeah, and, and, you know, the other trend I think happening this year is it's not a tech trend, it's an extreme weather trend. Mm, yeah, you, just you've had some crazy happening. stuff in the States, haven't you, recently? Yeah, we, we love crazy here in the States. So whether <laughs> it's crazy people or crazy weather, but, you know, just look what's happening in the, you know, the tech capital of the U.S., arguably the world, Silicon Valley, California. You know, just unbelievable flooding, uh, uh, you know, issues right now as we speak. And... It, it, it's leading to, again, double down on the need for, you, you know, flexible work and distributed work and, uh, you know, geographic diversity and uh, moving to the cloud, an- another reason to move to cloud for geo redundancy. And it, this is, uh, this is not ending anytime soon. So. Yeah, we've, had the, we've had the plague, we've had the flood and, you know, I don't know what comes next. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? 
Yeah, I think the other trend that's obvious is 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 you know uh, moving to cloud, not just generally, but in the real time communications and collaboration space and video. You know, we we've seen all of the hyperscalers uh, getting involved in CCAS and collaboration apps. And if you're starting, you know, a startup around video and collaboration or contact center, you're going to do that in the cloud uh, by by default uh, these days. And even at our big, you know, industry events like Enterprise Connect, you see AWS and Amazon and Microsoft, Azure, all taking part in these events. So the you know the digital cloud contact center, the you know, digital collaboration tools in the cloud are here to to stay. And there's a lot of those PBXs and black boxes in the back rooms that we used to see, they're, they're kind of going away slowly. It is, it is funny, again, when, when I, I talk, harping back to Microsoft, but I, you know, I remember pre-pandemic, you know, we were there doing Skype for Business, and then suddenly this kind of team thing came out, and the customers were like, yeah, we're not going to get a cloud. We, you know, we've got all these servers, or you know, we're super secure, we're <laughs> a nuclear power plant or whatever. We can't go to the cloud. And then obviously the pandemic hit, and it was that mass kind of like, we, we can't have, you know, 10,000 staff all coming through a VPN connection into, you know, a, a server in the office anymore. That's just not going to scale. It doesn't work. So I think obviously the pandemic was, you know, let's not talk about positives from it, but, you know, the, the, it certainly did help with regards to the cloud acceleration. And as you say, I think there's definitely going to be a, a further on of that. I, I guess when it comes to connectivity, the things like 5G are going to probably help with that as that starts to get rolled out. I mean, are we... Are we there with 5G yet? Is it is it kind of there yet? Kind of yeah. You know, I mean, I'm, I, everyone loves to to uh, to uh, bash 5G for its slow start, but you know, uh, mobility is in one of the most exciting areas right now. Not just because of 5G, but because we have mobility solutions that have integrated 5G with integrated clients and integrated numbering schemes. And uh, we're seeing the uh, you know GA of you know mobile for Microsoft Teams at various carriers, and it's going to make a much better experience for end users and enterprises for mobility. Um, and you know the, the sort of single number concept, one number versus having you know multiple phones and multiple numbers, one in the office, one at home. So mobility is getting much smarter, and five G coverage uh, is getting much much better. Um, you know, T-Mobile is is throwing tons of spectrum spectrum at it, and uh, enterprise five G is now a thing. So, mm. you know, a lot of places that had pretty bad maybe Wi Fi coverage, you know, stadiums and hospitals and uh, you know uh, manufacturing sites are going to get private five G, which means higher quality of service and so skipping, uh, skipping Wi Fi, but going to five G instead. For well, Wi Fi Wi Fi is 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 coming along with. Um, you know, Wi-Fi six and seven, but five G offers some advantages. You can cover a whole hospital with uh, with a couple of five G nodes and offer a quality of service and a reliability you can't always get with you know fifty hotspots in, in a <laughs> hospital. So, yeah, I'm I'm really excited about five G and you know all the carriers are, are pushing more spectrum out this year, and um, you know the devices now, whether it's Apple or even you know, routers or other devices are often 5G enabled, not just for, as a primary connection, but for backup and event mm. of those storms and power losses that we're seeing everywhere. So again, I just see a ton of enablement around uh, 5G this year. And and what about, um, you know, we, we talk about, about tech and a lot about, you know, kit, but clearly there's been a challenge around supply chain, you know, it doesn't matter what organizer, you know, motor trade with, you know, Tesla, or if you're in, you know, where we are in the UC and VC industry or in, you know, consumer, the, the availability of, of silicon of chips from, you know, the fabs like TSMC, I know Apple have said that they're going to be, you know, changing their chips to be manufactured in the States now and not you know, looking to, to China and the, the Far East for their, their chips. You see that we're kind of getting better and a better place with regards to things like supply chain of, of, of product and kit, um, you know, through this year, do you think we're going to, we've seen the sort of peak and we're now going to get, uh, you know, a lot better with regards to availability of product? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, people have been working to sort through their supply chain issues or a lot of the semiconductor capacity takes years to come online, but you know, what's going to help with supply chain is a good recession, you know, that will really damper. <laughs> 
damper uh, enthusiasm for buying uh, new devices. You've seen this, and you know, with uh, with in the crypto space that we're no longer, you know, mining for crypto. We're no longer getting high end, you know, DSP cards for crypto. And yeah, so, I can buy an Nvidia card at last from my computer at home because yeah, all the crypto that, guys aren't buying them up. The enterprise, but <laughs> but you know, the recession isn't good for lots of reasons. But sadly, that will be. One of the items that brings us, us all back to earth as far as some of the supply chain and the limitations and other things we saw with the pandemic. All right. And and what else, you know, what else are you kind of excited about for, for 2023? Well, I'm, I'm really excited about uh, social media. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, we're seeing social media being used not just for, you know, kind of marketing purposes, but for community, for collaboration, for content creation, for for live streaming, and all of the platforms will continue to push uh, live uh, community building capabilities like drop in audio. You can have audio chats now on LinkedIn. You, of course, have the video chats with LinkedIn Live. Um, it's become a publishing and media platform for long form content. And Twitter, you know, hopefully will will continue to to uh, you know, let's say, grow under Musk. We'll see if he doesn't kill it before he has a chance to make it grow. <laughs> but you know, I, I think there are opportunities for all of us to to sell, to market, to connect, communicate, collaborate on social. You know, putting all aside all the dark sides that we know so well. Yeah. Where where would you again for as a as a budding content creator? Where would you put? Where where should I put my efforts in? Where would you put your efforts in with regards to content creation? Well, you're doing platform? it. You know, you're you know only about four or five percent of people on LinkedIn actually create content. So it's a tremendous opportunity, not just for us as individuals to work on our personal or professional brand, but for organizations to create video content at scale. And uh, it's amazing, um, you know, companies not like Restaurant, but so many companies just aren't leveraging the opportunity that exists to to get attention, to get noticed, to get, you know, employees, to build community with their customers. And it's sad because social media is more than just push, pushing out a few posts a day. Mm. It's, about, it's about building an engaged and loyal community and, you um, leveraging this amazing uh, network of analysts and journalists and media and bloggers and IT practitioners and on and on that love to uh, to uh, connect on social. It is so interesting. Not doing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You see you see so many people just sort of regurgitating that kind of corporate, um, you know, post. The, the company will put out a, a corporate tweet or a corporate, uh, you know, thing on LinkedIn and then you'll get – a million different people just post reposting the same thing, sort of regurgitating that and kind of trying to amplify that at scale. But there are, as you say, very few people that are creating unique content and, and creating content rather than just reposting other stuff. And I think that's where the value and the power comes in, as I say, is the creating rather than just the, you know, sort of reposting or you know, plagiarizing or regurgitating. Yeah, no, I think being a content creator is a, not just a real job as as I've demonstrated, but a real opportunity. And you're you're killing it. I mean, you're out there creating. You're a media company now. You're creating your own show. It's bringing lots of benefits to Crestron, but it's also you know highlighting your personal and professional uh, background. So it's a win win for everyone, including hopefully the viewers, where we're providing some insights and some valuable content. Fantastic. Fantastic. Evan, I could talk to you for hours and say, I just love getting that snapshot about what's going on. You're in so many different feeds and different you know, technologies going on. Uh, and again, I'd love to do it full time uh, if I didn't have a, 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 a day job. So again, it must be so cool looking at all the cool. There's always night. Stuff. You have a day yeah. job. But the <laughs> yeah, nights, there's always night. Yeah. The nights are for content <laughs> creation, as they say. I love it. Thank you ever so much for joining us on this episode of Crest TV. And we'll get you back later in the year and we'll, we'll talk through some of those predictions and look at some of those uh, ai created songs and uh, and see what we think of them all right look forward to it thanks so much thanks evan and thank you all for joining us on this week's crest tv i love evan he say he's got such a great feed of information if you aren't following him where have you been what are you doing go and hook him up on twitter and linkedin you will learn so much cool stuff about what's going on in the tech industry 
Uh, make sure you join us uh, regularly here on Crest TV. Uh, ring the bell, hit subscribe, share to your friends uh, that Crest TV is the place to be. And I will see you, uh, if not before, on the next episode.